All right, welcome back to the second installment of our line boring journey here at Rottler. We're here on the EM79. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and go back, check it out. In part one, we went over setting up and installing the right angle drive on our machine here, as well as setting up the line bore pivot table uh, and tramming in this 5.9 Cummins block that we're working on today. Uh, we went over how to sweep the mains, make sure everything's in line, as well as sweeping in this face. Uh, off camera here, we've, we've installed the cutter head body in here. They work pretty much identical to any Rottler boring tooling. Uh, the only thing to be in note with line boring in regards to tooling is today we have a RT321, that's our 64th inch uh, nose radius insert carbide. Um, you're probably familiar with that if you've been using our tooling for a while. With the line bore operations, we're usually taking very, very small cuts. Um, and carbide inserts just in general, the way they're manufactured and the actual edge prep that's put on a standard insert can sometimes uh, struggle with these really light cuts. Uh, they kind of like to take a little more bite. So what Rottler does offer is our RT321F and uh, the F designation is for finishing. Uh, if you're doing light cuts at slow feed rates like these line bore operations often tend to be uh, looking into those finishing designated inserts can be beneficial for getting a better surface finish. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, when you're starting out in for general line boring work, a 321 or even a 322 uh, will usually get the job done. Depends on the surface finish you're looking for. Um, and remember, the 322 is that 32nd inch nose radius, which means we could feed a little bit faster. So maybe instead of a 2,000 inch per rev, you can do 4 thousands. Um, and, and still get the same uh, surface finish. So let's grab the camera and we'll go over the process for writing one of these programs. See if I On the main screen in our Rottler software, you always have your blocks over on the left and you have uh, operations that you add to create files on the right. So Cummins 5.9, we already have a line bore in here. If you wanted to add one up here at new, open the operations, scroll down, find your line bore, and click it, press OK, it'll add it in. I'm gonna go into this one. When you open this up, you're gonna go to the standard uh, set zeros page where you can control all the axes. Now the first thing we wanna do is we need to set uh, our X and Y, or X DRO, I should say. Y and Z, keep in mind, we've, we've been working, you should have been working within this program by now. So uh, that should carry over from what you set during your setups. So you set the X, I'm gonna move this into position and then I'll show it on camera. What we wanna do is I like to set up to where we're about an eighth inch away from the block. So you can see that right there. And I'll set that location uh, on the machine here as my X zero. So I'll double tap x and hit zero so we've now stored that that value right there if you haven't seen that before double tap press yes it'll save that as zero uh, after that within this for programming we have our vertical stops page and our bore locations i always like to do bore locations first and then come back and do my vertical stops it's kind of just my process for any uh Rottler block software programming and you'll see within here we have xyz coordinates uh, and it's going to save the locations. Now Y and Z should always be on the zeros that we've already set from our setups. We also have bore lengths, uh, this particular one, you measure it and then give yourself a little extra, maybe a hundred thousandths to go past the bore. So I'm doing a negative because we're moving to the left, negative 1.350. That's enough to get me all the way through the bore uh, and, and finish on the outside. So to set these locations, all we have to do, again, it's point and shoot. Uh, we just want to move from our, our zero location over to our next start point in X. And we can uh, set the value here or type it in. So I'm going to back this up. We've got seven bores. It's easiest done with the hand wheel. Come up in Z. Move over an X. You can go back down, make sure you get as close as you feel comfortable. 
And up here, uh, the DRO and X will say it's now negative 4.732. Uh, I can press the set button. If I press the set button, it'll just take that value and, and only for X, it's just gonna take the value where we're at currently. So, I'll just work down the line now. Set where you feel comfortable. This will be three. Press the set button. Are you sure? Yes. So on and so forth. Got enough clearance there. Four. Good. Let's see, we're on five. If you're comfortable, you can use the feed. Combination of both, hand wheel and feed. Whatever works for you. Six, set. So I just moved this back over to the start point and now let's bring back in. So I've got all my bore locations, uh, the X location set on the screen now and you can see them right here. All right. So now I go back over to the, my vertical stops. The things I have to set in here, block clearance. Uh, I just want to be above the block so we can just read the DRO. You also have the set option over here. Um, just make sure I'm above. Okay. So as long as you're above, hit set, it'll record the value from up here under the ZDRO. Clearance retract angle, we don't need to worry about that. That's to allow it to retract out at a, an angle if you have clearance issues that you're working on a block, that can be useful. If you've got straight up and down access to the mains, you shouldn't have to worry about that. And then uh, our right angle drives all have a gear reduction. Uh, so this specific one, it's two. So you'll need to type that in. That should be recorded and sent to you when you purchase one of our right angle drives. And then over here we have dwell RPM. So if you're coming up on a spot face uh, and you want to tell it how many revolutions to do, maybe a counter bore or a, or a spot face operation, that can be helpful to clean up that surface. Then back, the last thing is in the set zeros. Down at the bottom, we have our RPM. Somewhere between, uh, you know, depending on the bore, 250 to maybe 600 RPM is uh, good for most rads. It also depends on your gear reduction and how much RPM your machine spindle has to give. And then feed rate, we usually run somewhere between 2,000 inch per rev up to maybe a 6,000 depending on the insert again we're using and what surface finish we're looking for. So we'll set these back to 4,400. Right in the middle. So that's about it. Uh, for programming, that's all you have to do and that's what's so unique and, and clean and efficient about the Rottler system. Just like on our boring, where we're using the probe, uh, the location, like what I like to say, just point and shoot machining. Um, the only difference with the right angle drive is we do have to sweep it in with the magnet scale because uh, we're not using the probe here. You can always come back and uh, check these locations too. You can hit move one, make sure I'm going to the right location. And I can also, when I move to it, it's always a good idea with your cutter in there. Go ahead and sweep around uh, and make sure that it looks correct. You know, it should stay the same from our setup, uh, but it's always good to double check. So, check out part three where we'll show you this thing running. Uh, from here on, uh, the adjustments that you do to this, uh, it's no different than working with any of our boring bars. You're going to take that first pass, you're going to just air cut, maybe a little skim pass. 
you'll dial mortgage, see where you ended up at, uh, go ahead and put the cartridge into one of our boring micrometers. You can adjust it from there to hit the nominal size that you want in your line bore. Um, again, I hope this is uh, insightful and some good uh, information. If you're setting up a line bore or you're looking at a Rottler machine tool to do some engine block line boring on, um, as always, take care out there. Happy machining and catch you next time.